Hey, how's it going? This is Melinda and welcome to my channel. Today, I wanna to show you two new releases from Mobile Fidelity. They're on Super Vinyl, 33 RPM, and they're both very, very important and great albums. This is Whitney from 1987 by Whitney Houston, a terrific album. And also, Raisin Hell by Run DMC, and this one came out in 1986. They're gorgeous records. Uh, they were given to me. They're promotional copies, so thank you to Mobile Fidelity for sending them my way. Let's start off by talking about the Whitney album. As I said, it is on Super Vinyl, a very high quality premium vinyl. Sounds great. You're not going to get those pops and clicks. It's a beautiful formula. I honestly like Mobile Fidelity's regular black vinyl formula. This one's even better. They're, they're both great. And take a look at this beautiful matte finish on this album. Just really, really beautiful. A lovely gatefold, beautiful picture of Whitney, great lyrics. Something else that I noticed on both of these records is the mastering chain is directly on the album cover. So I thought that was very cool long after I'm gone and someone else has this record, they will be able to look at the back of the record and know the mastering chain. And I don't think anybody has ever wore a wife beater tank top as good as Whitney Houston. What a beautiful woman. Uh, Bruce Willis can't even touch her when it comes to that wife beater. So beautiful, an iconic picture. I have a feeling if she were still alive today, well, she would be 60 years old. I think she'd still look like this and look gorgeous. But, um, you know, of course we no longer have her. Tragedy happened in her life. And um, that's part of what makes talking about this record bittersweet, among other things. And it's such a great record. It was one that my mom had um, the cassette of in her car. And if you all know me, I've got a soft sp uh, spot for my mom. And I used to ride in the car with her and I have great memories of just the mundane things in life with her, going to the grocery store, get in the car and drive somewhere. You know, we didn't have lavish vacations. We didn't do anything that I would say uh, is historically important. It was just time we spent together. Well, this was 1987. By then I had a car of my own and we did not get in the car together and drive near as often as we once did. However, occasionally I would get in with her and I can really, really remember the Whitney Houston era when this record was in the car all the time. So let's talk a little bit about the songs. Uh, the first one, I wanna dance with somebody. Of course, that was such a good song. Everybody knows that one. It's a get up and dance type of song. I have great memories of not only hearing that one with my mom in the car, but I worked at Holiday World. It was a theme park when this song was popular. And one of the few times I can imagine, and it might be the only time, uh, I went to Holiday World for orientation before the job started and I met a girl there and we just clicked. It was just an immediate knowing we are going to be really good friends. That doesn't happen to me very often where I just have this instant knowing that someone was going to be one of my best friends or you know anything like that. So that was very cool. And sure enough, that's, that year we worked together we became the best of friends. And where we worked in a gaming department was really close to uh, where entertainers performed and danced and sang. And one of the songs that they would perform in their show was I Wanna Dance With Somebody. So three times a day we heard the same show over and over, day after day after day. And I Wanna Dance With Somebody, I heard it at least three times a day. But my friend Tina, who was a fantastic singer, would sing with them. And that added a little bit of fun to it, it made it nice. And yes, I'm not gonna lie, that song got a little old that summer, but I can sure look back on it and remember it very fondly now. And it sounds absolutely wonderful here on this release. I also really love the song, Love Will Save the Day. There is a beautiful vibes that are played and they sound absolutely incredible on that song. I believe Roy Ayers maybe played that and beautiful, absolutely stunning. It's a really cool song and I do remember hearing that one on the radio. The song So Emotional uh, was also a hit that sounds great on here. Um, 
the song that really impacts me the most when I heard it, and I'm not gonna lie, it did bring a little bit of a tear to my eye when I heard it, because I hadn't heard it in a while. Um, and it just took over. Uh, it's called Didn't We Almost Have It All. Oh, I'm, I can't even talk about it right now, hang on. Okay, so I was listening to this after I got it yesterday, and there's a lyric, and I wanna read it to you so I make sure I get it right. Um, you know, I can remember being in the car with my mom, not the Red Pinto era, this was later, the big boat LTD, picture a boat on wheels, that was my mom's car. Um, one of the songs on here, the lyric says, didn't we almost have it all when love was all we had worth giving? The ride with you was worth the fall, my friend. Loving you makes life worth living. And when I listened to it yesterday, I was overcome by the beauty of the sound of Whitney Houston's voice. If ever there was a voice that de deserves the audiophile treatment, I think it's Whitney Houston's. And it sounded so gorgeous. And I was overcome by memories of my mom. The ride with you was worth the fall. Um, Cause I miss her, of course. Loving you makes life worth living. And you know, when I heard that, when I was in the, was in the car with her, I probably took it for granted. I won't lie. I was probably thinking of a boy that I don't even remember now that doesn't really matter. But man, I love that I can listen to it now and think of my mom. I can think of my husband and my daughter. Uh, what a beautiful song. Um, one of the highlights of this album, another really popular song that was on the radio all the time was Where Do Broken Hearts Go? I love the song Where Are You? You're Still My Man is Beautiful. Uh, it's a great, great sounding record. And I do have the original. The original's good. For me, I prefer this. When playing my original, uh, sometimes I would try to play it loud and I would have to turn it down a little bit. I'd get a little bit of an ear fatigue. There was a little bit of a shrillness to it. Um, and I probably could have adjusted my stereo equipment and, and took that out, but I never really want to mess with it too much. I don't like just piddling with all of that all the time. Uh, I didn't have to do that with this Mobile Fidelity release. Uh, I left it as is, cranked it up. It sounded gorgeous. Huge sound stage, beautifully balanced. Uh, a job well done. So I think they did Whitney very, very well. And uh, this is a beautiful release. So now let's go ahead and talk about the cultural importance of Raising Hell by Run DMC. This was a groundbreaking album, came out in 1986. At the time, I didn't really know it was a cultural, uh, you know, song that was going to, you know, really change things up. And yet I kind of did, because I can remember seeing that uh, video where Aerosmith's breaking down a wall. Uh, and I thought that was really cool. I remember the mix of the rock and roll and the rap and, and really thinking, wow, this is fresh, this is new, this is exciting. I can remember being thrilled to see Aerosmith coming back into the spotlight. Their career had kind of not been there for a while. And I loved seeing the rising stars run DMC great music. I had the cassette of this in my car that I paid for with my own money, the car and the cassette, by the way. And wow, what a beautiful and incredible release. This thumps. This is 33 RPM, super vinyls, that premium vinyl, just like the Whitney album. Incredible gatefold. Great, great album cover. It's solid. It's thick. It's sturdy, just like the Whitney version. I had the 45 RPM version already. I got rid of my original because this 45 RPM bested it by far. And the 33 RPM delivers and it's excellent too. So if you didn't grab the 45 RPM version, here's your chance to get a 33 RPM version. It's going to sound just as good and be incredible. Um, thumps, bass is great. The rapping is so crisp and clear and punchy, everything about it. And I love every single song. I remember hearing them all. Um, I can remember being at a dance club and going from my Adidas into Walk This Way, all in one, it just sounded like one big song. And I can tell you one thing about that um, for sure. Uh, maybe I didn't realize what a groundbreaking song it was, but I do remember being on the dance floor. And when this came on, 
everybody came uh, out to dance. And I mean everybody. Didn't matter who you were or what you looked like. We were all dancing to Run DMC. So I think that makes this record extremely special. Sound quality is great. This one is mastered by Krieg Wunderlich. He did a fantastic job. So, so good. And there also is a little paper in here that was very nice, a write-up. It is written by Bob uh, Gendron, Gendron, I want to make sure I pronounce that right, Gendron, and uh, he writes for the Chicago Tribune, and he's a music enthusiast. He wrote a beautiful uh, write-up about the cultural importance of this release, so I thought that was kind of nice to have in the jacket as a part of history. So many, many years down the road, uh, someone can take that out and know the cultural importance of that record. So uh, just a quick review, Beautiful Whitney by Whitney Houston, 1987. This is on super vinyl at 33 RPM, mastered by Creed Wunderlich and assisted by Sean Britton. And the 33 RPM, 1986, Run DMC's Raisin Hell. Uh, 33 RPM, super vinyl, a thumper of an album, absolutely tremendous. Both records are so good. And thank you so much to Mobile Fidelity. Again, oh, if I, I don't remember if I showed this on the Run DMC record. Uh, again, they're putting it right on the album. You know exactly the mastering and, and how it was done. I really love that mastering chain is on there. So thank you so much to Mobile Fidelity. Uh, again, I will leave a link to Music Direct, Mobile Fidelity. You can get all the information if you're interested. You know what? There's one more thing I want to say. This is something I've been wanting to talk about on my channel for a while. Because a lot of times when I talk about audiophile records like this, I get a comment that I've been aiming to address. Some of you will say there's no point in me having these records because I don't have great stereo equipment. I don't have the audiophile expensive stereo equipment. Well, let me share with you. Um, I didn't either, and I still don't have what some people have. I'm trying to make improvements as I go along, and I'm getting there. But when I first started out, I had a $200 to $300 turntable, and literally all of my other stereo equipment was just stuff we found around the house that my husband had in an old theater, uh, little bookshelf uh, speakers, nothing fancy at all. But I put it all together and I would play my records, and I got this record. This was gifted to me. I had won a vinyl contest I had entered, got this as the gift. It is Bob Dylan's John Wesley Harding original master recording by Mobile Fidelity. It is the mono version, and I had never had a Bob Dylan record before, and I don't think I had a Mobile Fidelity record yet. But I put it on, it's 45 RPM, two LPs, and I played it. And on my uh, very um, modest stereo equipment, I heard a huge difference. I heard Bob Dylan come into my living room and play the harmonica and sing for me. So you don't have to have extremely expensive stereo equipment to enjoy the pleasures of great sounding records. And you probably already know that. So uh, keep that in mind. Don't let uh, what you're listening on keep you from getting records you really want to try. You know, give it a try. Anyway, that is my video for this time. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.